Winter, unfortunately, is upon us, but the great thing is it's time for the snowbirds to come out. And in this video, we'll draw one. Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video we're going to take a look at combining black ink, white ink, and markers to create a quick sketch of a snowbird on gray paper. Now if you like this video make sure that you give it a like and of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel I'd encourage you to do that as well. And of course I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about the membership program over at TheVirtualInstructor.com which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. There's also weekly live lessons which are all recorded and stored in our vault. You can go back and watch any of the live lessons we've ever produced. There are weekly critiques uh, that are part of the Members Minute and there's also a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers which includes everything you need to teach everything you need all the videos all the handouts everything um, all of that of course is included in the membership program everyone starts out with a week-long trial for free so you can check out the program see if it's right for you i'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check out the membership program and also if you want to just check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free i'll leave a link in the description below for that as well now we're going to be drawing from a photo reference i'll leave a link to that photo reference below this video it will be up on the screen as we complete the drawing but if you want to have the photo reference in front of you of course i'll leave a link for that as well all right with that being said let's go ahead and get into the drawing of the snowbird i'll be creating my drawing on strathmore 400 series toned gray sketch paper absolutely love this surface it provides a medium value to start with allowing us to add both light and dark values to the surface Initially, we'll sketch out the subject. I'll be using an H graphite pencil. Of course, you can use any graphite pencil that you prefer, but I'm looking for a graphite pencil that's light enough so that the marks are not visible when we're complete and easily erased, but also dark enough that I can see it on the surface. We'll be applying some alcohol-based markers. I have a few grayscale markers here. These are Prismacolor Premier markers. We'll be using a 20% warm gray, a 50% warm gray, and a 70% warm gray. For the pen and ink applications, I'll be using Stadler pigment liners here. I have a couple of sets here shown on the screen. I'll probably be just sticking with a couple of pens, maybe just one single pen for the entire drawing. Of course, we'll be needing to add lighter values to the surface. And for this, I'll be using some white gel pens initially. For the larger areas, I'll actually be using a white Posca marker to fill in those sections. Now we're ready to start the drawing process, but you can see I've already planned out my picture plane here. And uh, mine measures eight inches across by seven inches tall. And I'm using this picture plane to make comparisons with the edges of the picture plane and where the edges of the body of the bird are located. So first I plan out where the top of the head's gonna be located and then the bottom of the body. And then I start drawing my basic shapes here. You can see I drew an oval initially for the body. And then I'm just connecting that oval with that kind of smaller triangular point at the bottom of the bird. And then once we've got those two basic shapes in place, we can go ahead and draw the shape of the head and then start working on our outer contour lines. We'll also include a simple triangular shape for the beak. And then we can start adding a few details on the inside part of the body, including the eye. Now I noticed that the eye lines up with the top of the beak. The bottom of the eye is about in alignment with the bottom of the beak. So once you get your initial shapes and initial contour lines in place, you can use that information to make comparisons with what you're seeing for many of the details on the inside of the body of the bird. We'll add a few tail feathers, and of course this bird is sitting on a branch, so we'll go ahead and draw the branch before adding the talons. We'll also add a few tufts of snow here and there as well. You'll also notice that I'm using sketchy lines to draw out the contours initially. That keeps me loose, it keeps my pencil moving, and it helps me find the correct line without being too stiff with my initial applications. Then once we've got the shape of the branch in place, we can go ahead and draw the talons. And this particular bird is a contortionist and his legs or her legs are positioned in a different direction from which the bird is looking. So we'll make sure that this is reflected in our drawing, of course. 
Then we'll go ahead and add some of the details of the outer contours of the bird, including a few stray feathers. And then we'll work on the inside part of the body of the bird. Here, I'm just drawing out areas where I see contrast and value. So where I'm seeing a dark value nestled next to a lighter value, I am drawing a few lines there to get an in initial idea of where my darks and lights are going to be located. We'll go ahead and add another tuft of snow, and I'm going to bring this bit of snow a little bit further in the picture plane. Now we're ready to start with our marker applications. We'll use the marker application somewhat as an underpainting. I'm starting here with the 20% warm gray. It's barely visible on the surface of the paper because these two grays are pretty similar. It is darkening the value to a certain extent. I like to start cautiously and gradually darken the values. As you can see here, I've switched over now to the 50% warm gray. You can see that's quite a bit darker and it is more visible on the surface. We wanna be careful in these early stages that we don't get too dark too quickly. We do have the advantage of using the white media that we'll be applying later in the process, but we still need to work a little bit cautiously here in the beginning. Now with these markers, you'll notice that initially the value is a little bit darker but as the marker dries, it gets a little bit lighter. So I like to bounce around when I'm applying the markers and let areas dry before evaluating the values. We'll go ahead and apply some of the 50% warm gray in all the areas where we see middle to dark values. Remember, you can always go a bit darker. So again, work a little bit cautiously here in the beginning stages of the drawing. Now the top part of the body of the bird, the head is pretty dark. So we'll go ahead and apply the 50% warm gray here. And then now that the middle section has dried, we can go back again with the 50% warm gray and make a few values a little bit darker before moving on to the talons and the branch. I am thinking about the cross contours or the form of each area that I'm applying the marker in. So you can see down here on the branch, I am making some marks that kind of curve around the body of the branch. This adds the value obviously, but it also gives us a little bit of information about texture and more importantly, the form of this particular section. Now we'll go ahead and establish some of the darker values within the eye. And I'm being very careful here since I'm using this bulky marker. I'm making sure that I leave an area of highlight open. And then of course we can continue to darken the values again as each section dries. These markers are transparent, so they work a little bit like watercolor where we can apply a value or a color and let it dry and then go back over the top of it and make it slightly darker. For now, we'll go ahead and switch over to our pen and ink applications. For this entire drawing, I'm gonna be using the 0.1 pigment liner by Stadler. You can see I'm trying to make my marks flow in the direction that's consistent with how the small little feathers grow on the head. So it's very important to think about your directional stroking, especially when you're using a medium like pen and ink. And although pen and ink is considered more of a precise technical medium, you can still be rather loose with your applications and still end up with a rather tight drawing. So don't be afraid to let your hand be a little bit loose when you're making these marks. If you over tighten or uh, clench up a little bit, you're going to find that your marks uh, are too controlled and your drawing will look lifeless. So allow some of your marks to be a little bit free, a little bit more organic. Now, of course, in the areas where we see lighter values, we're going to leave those spaces open for now. We're going to address those a bit later with the white media. But for now, we're concentrating on the values that exist on the lower part of the value scale or the darker values. So, of course, in the medium dark areas and also the extremely dark areas, we'll apply quite a bit of the pen here. There are some areas of darker value within the lighter areas as well, so we'll ap apply a few stray marks in those areas as well. And of course, while we're doing this, we're paying attention to the feathers and we're looking at the direction that these feathers are turning or growing in. And of course, we're going to try to mimic our strokes with the pen and ink in a similar way. 
And it's important to note that your applications don't have to be perfect, although I am continuing to go back and forth between the photo reference and the drawing paper. I'm allowing myself some freedom. I'm not trying to copy absolutely everything that I see. And as we apply these marks, of course, we're starting to understand the form of the bird. And we're also getting some information about the texture as well. Now, of course, in the tail feathers, we have quite a bit of darker values. So we use quite a bit of hatching here to fill in some of those darker areas. We really don't want to have any area where we have solid black. So I'm allowing some of the gray of the paper to show through or some of the gray left by the markers to show through. So we have a little bit of variety. If you make an area that is solid black with pen and ink, it tends to make the drawing look flat. Uh, sometimes that's a stylistic choice. In this particular case, I'm allowing some of the values and colors underneath the show through. Now, down on the talons, of course, just like we did with the marks that we made on the branch, we'll allow these marks to curve over the curved surface. These are called cross contour lines. And of course, they help to communicate the form and the texture while developing the value. And speaking of the branch, we'll continue down on the branch with the pen and ink applications. Here again, I'm adding more variety in my mark, leaving some spaces open. But more importantly, I'm making sure that my directional stroking is flowing over the form of the branch. Even though most of the marks that we make uh, could be considered to be more vertical, we'll add a few horizontal strokes there too to add some indication of texture. Now, I'm going to allow my drawing to fade out on the three edges of the branches. So I'm going to put less and less marks as we work our way out to the edges of the picture plane and allow more of that detail and more mark making to occur closer to the body of the bird. Now, even though this is a fairly quick sketch, we still want to take our time and not rush the process. So down here on the branch, this is an opportunity to rush. So um, try to avoid doing that and just work slowly and deliberately. Again, give yourself some freedom to have some deviation between the reference and what you're drawing. And just evaluate the marks you're making as you're making them and kind of analyze them and decide, is this looking like the texture of a branch? And if, if that's not the case, then ask yourself, what can I do? What directional strokes can I make to make it look more believable? All right, now we'll go ahead and move on to our white media. And I'm starting with a gel pen here. We'll go ahead and put in the highlight in the eye and the highlights around the beak. There's also a bit of snow on the beak here as well. At first, this isn't going to make very much sense in our drawing. But once we get all the other bits of snow in place and all of the light values, it'll make more sense. Initially, you can see how much contrast there is when we start applying the white pen. We'll go ahead and start working with the white gel pen into the white or light areas in the body of the bird. And we'll allow some of the pen and ink applications to show through uh, underneath the white applications to indicate some areas of gray. Of course, the breast of the bird is where we're going to see the strongest highlight since our light source is originating from the left side. So we're going to have a heavier application on the breast of the bird with the white media. Now, working backward towards the back side of the body, of course, we'll continue to fill in this lighter area just underneath the top of the head. We need to have some pretty strong contrast here. So we've got the dark top part of the head and then we've got that light section underneath. And here again with the gel pen, just as we did with the pen and ink applications, we'll consider the direction that the small feathers are growing in. And of course, we'll make our strokes reflect this. Of course, there are some strong contrasting shapes on the tail feathers, so we'll use the white gel pen to indicate the lighter values. And then it's back into the body of the bird, adding some more areas of lighter value. Now you can see we can go right over the top of some of the pen and ink applications, and this creates more of a gray than it does a lighter value. There are some strong highlights that are happening on the bottom part of the body of the bird. Some of that light is coming through, creating these highlights around the outer edges. So, of course, we'll address these with the white gel pen. Now, 
You also notice that the white gel pen is not quite as consistent uh, with the mark making as the black ink pens. So you'll need to keep this in mind, of course, but somewhat of a broken line is uh, oftentimes encouraged. Again, that creates more of a realistic appearance. Now I switched over to the 70% warm gray, and this is a much darker marker. And we're gonna go in here and uh, add some more darker values here. This is, of course, gonna increase the contrast and it's gonna bring out more detail. Most of these darker values that I'm adding now exist on the underside of the shape of lighter value at the top of the head. We'll continue with this marker a little bit further down, making some of these areas just slightly darker. Then it's back with the gel pen, adding a few more highlights here. We're working on the talons. Again, the light source is originating from the left side, so we're gonna see these highlights mainly on the left side of the talons. Again, I'm making my mark slightly curved uh, on the body of the talon, but down where we actually see the claw, the lines can be a little bit straighter. We only need a few marks down here. We don't need to spell everything out for the viewer, just a few highlights. We'll go ahead and start working on these little tufts of snow. And I'm just gonna work around the outer edges here with the gel pen and we'll fill in the body of these sections of snow with the Posca marker. So now we switched over to the Posca marker and we're just gonna fill in these areas of snow with uh, a larger marker, obviously, so it'll save us a bit of time and make our applications a little bit more consistent. Even with the Posca marker, though, we do still see directional strokes. This is something that's a little bit unavoidable um, with this particular surface and material combination. Now we'll switch back to the pen and ink, and we'll go ahead and fill in some of the areas that got a little bit too light with our applications with the white media. This is gonna add an extra layer uh, over the top of the white applications. We do see some, a few darker stray feathers here and there, so these marks will help to communicate these. And now that we've got quite a bit of value in place, we can make some of the areas that we were a little bit cautious with at the beginning a little bit darker. And then we'll add a few stray feathers around the outer contour here with the white gel pen. And a few more feathers at the bottom part of the body here. Now we'll go back to our areas of snow now that the Posca marker has dried and we're gonna apply a bit of 50% warm gray here initially to create a little bit of an indication of shadow. These collections of snow of course are forms and they need to have areas of shadow and highlight just like the rest of the drawing to help indicate the light source. As you can see, the markers do a great job over the top of the Posca marker. We'll add a bit of shadow to most of the tufts of snow. And then we'll add a bit of 20% warm gray over the top to create a little bit of a transition. My marker here is on its way out, so the 20% gray is not that visible, but it does make a little bit of a transition. Now we'll add a few last marks here with a pen and ink. Again, just adding a few bits of information about some of the smaller feathers and also darkening some of the values.
And then again, with the gel pen, we'll do the same. We'll add a few bits of lighter value and also some more directional stroking here to indicate some of the feathers at the back of the body. And then once all of the ink has dried completely, we'll use a kneaded eraser to remove any remaining graphite lines that are still visible. And now our quick sketch of a snowbird using white and black ink and markers is complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. And if you drew alongside me, I hope you're happy with the results of your drawing. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.